Hey there guys, how's it going? Mike coming back at you here with another video on Vector Calculus, our favorite thing to do uh, during our quarantine. Uh, in the previous video, uh, we talked about the background, uh, some notation, some terminology, uh, and the statement of Stokes' theorem. Uh, in this video, we are going to go through some sample problems uh, to see how we use uh, Stokes' theorem. And we're going to talk about an interesting little result that we get as a result of Stokes' theorem. Now, before we get to that, uh, at the end of the previous video, I may have uh, suggested uh, that we talked about the relationship between Stokes' theorem uh, and one of our previous theorems. Uh, however, we did not. So I want to kick off this video uh, with that guy right there. Uh, up top, you see the statement of Stokes theorem. It says that the double integral over s of the curl of our vector field f hat dot n hat ds is equal to the integral over partial s of f hat dot dr hat. Now that left-hand integral is saying that what we're actually finding there on the left-hand side this is the integral of the normal component of the curl of your vector field over that surface. And then the integral on the right is the integral of the tangential component of your vector field along the boundary of that surface. Uh, there's a curve that forms the boundary of the portion of the surface that we're looking at, uh, and the right-hand integral is the integral of the component of the vector field that is tangent to this curve. So this all has to do with vector fields and curves in R3. If we take our vector field and our uh, curve uh, and we project it into the plane, if we project it into R2, um, then a surface in R2 is really just a region in the uh, x, y plane, um, and the, the boundary curve, the curve that was forming the boundary of the surface, uh, will then, in R2, uh, just become the curve that's forming the boundary of our region in the x, y plane. Uh, if we look at the statement of Green's theorem, it says the double integral over d of q sub x minus p sub y dA uh, which equals the double integral over d of curl of f hat dot k hat dA is equal to the integral over partial d of p dx plus q dy. Well, the two integrals on the left-hand side that are all uh, bracketed there, uh, that is the integral of the normal component of the curl of your vector field over the surface, in quotes, uh, that you have in your, in your plane, in R2. Again, we said that a surface in R2 is just a uh, region. And we saw from earlier on in the course that Q sub X minus P sub Y is equal to the K component of uh, the curl. And this is the one component that is normal to a region in the xy plane. Any z vector, anything that just has a z component that's not zero, uh, is going to be normal to any vector in the xy plane. And the right-hand uh, integral there, uh, we are taking the integral of the tangential component of our vector field along the boundary of the region in our plane. This is uh, one of the uh, basic uh, forms, specifically the differential form uh, for the uh, line integral, which tells us work or flow or uh, circulation. We saw this earlier on in the course as well. So that integral on the right-hand side is telling us that this is the integral of the component of the vector field that's tangent to our curve. And our curve is what makes up the boundary of this region in the xy plane. Well, if we look back at these two things here, in both cases, 
we're saying that the integral of the normal component of the curl over some region slash surface equals the integral of the component of the vector field that's tangent to the boundary of that region or uh, surface. And this is uh, the big thing that I want you to understand uh, from Stokes' theorem. Stokes' theorem is simply Green's theorem scaled up to R3. Now, we saw two forms of Green's theorem. We saw the flux divergence form and the circulation curl form. Well, the integral of the tangential component of a vector field along the boundary, uh, that talks about circulation because we have a uh, closed uh, curve. Uh, and our other integral uh, on the other side of our equation uh, deals with the curl. So specifically, Stokes' theorem is the circulation curl form of Green's theorem scaled up one dimension uh, into R3. So these two theorems are saying the same thing. It's just one is in R2 and the other one is in R3. So that's the key uh, relationship uh, that I wanted to make clear between these two theorems. So now we'll move on to some uh, practice problems to see how we actually use uh, Stokes' theorem. Uh, and typically when you see these problems, if the question says use Stokes' theorem to find uh, one particular type of um, integral, it means that with the information that you're given in the problem, you're actually going to solve the other one. So if it says find the uh, line um, integral, you're actually going to find the, sur the uh, surface um, integral and vice versa. So our first example here, we're going to use Stokes' theorem to find the double integral over S of the normal component of the curl, where F hat is y comma negative x comma x cubed y and s is the portion of the sphere of radius 4 with z coordinates being greater than or equal to 0 and we're going to assume the upward and thus outward unit normal. So this problem is asking us in the, in the statement of the problem uh, to find the surface um, integral, which means we're actually going to calculate the line integral here. So first thing we need to think of is what is the boundary uh, curve that we are uh, working with here? What's, what's the boundary curve uh, for the surface that we are looking at? Well, it says S is the portion of the sphere of radius 4 with Z being greater than or equal to 0. So we're looking at the top half of the sphere of radius 4, which means that the intersection of the sphere and the xy plane, that, equate, that curve that we have, that's going to be our boundary curve. That's going to be our partial S. Not too much trouble. Uh, to figure out that the boundary curve, in this case, is going to be x squared plus y squared is equal to 16. And we can parameterize that with very little trouble. R hat of t is 4 cosine t comma 4 sine t comma 0. And now it's very important uh, that we include that z component of 0. Uh, because we have a vector field with uh, three pieces to it, three uh, component functions. So we need to specify that third component of our parameterization for our boundary curve. Uh, and it's just zero because this is uh, the trace of the sphere in the xy plane, which has equation z is equal to uh, zero. We find dr. So we differentiate each uh, component of r hat, uh, and we add dt on the end. So pretty straightforward to calculate that there. Last thing we need, we need to uh, take our 
parameterization for our curve and substitute it into our vector field. Uh, so the y component of r hat replacing any y's, x component of r hat uh, re replacing any x's in our uh, vector field f hat. Note that there's no uh, z piece here. Uh, so this is what you get when you substitute your parameterization into your vector field. So the double integral over the surface of the normal component of the curl is equal to the integral over the boundary of the tangential component of our vector field. That's just a statement of Stokes' theorem. So we're taking the dot products of these two vectors right here. that guy and that guy right there and when we do that we come up with minus 16 sine squared t minus 16 cosine squared t. Uh, pull, the, pull the minus 16 out and use your Pythagorean theorem uh, you get the integral from 0 to 2 pi of negative 16 dt. Uh, this is now very straightforward. The integral of a constant is equal to the constant times the length of the interval, so we get negative 32 pi. So that's our first problem. A pretty nice, pretty basic, straightforward kind of uh, problem here. Going to move on to the second one. Uh, in this case, uh, the, problem, the problem is telling us uh, to find the line integral which means we're actually going to calculate the surface integral here. So we're going to use Stokes' theorem to find the integral over the boundary of s of f hat dot dr hat. Uh, your vector field f hat is given. 3x squared y plus z y, comma y squared comma 4x squared y. And s is the portion of the plane defined by z is equal to 4 minus 2x minus y in the first octant. So if you have to calculate the surface um, integral, first thing you need to do is come up with a parameterization for your surface. Pretty straightforward there. Uh, capital phi hat of u comma v. Again, this is just a function of two variables. So the uh, parameterization is straightforward. u comma v comma 4 minus 2u minus v. The bounds for this guy are a little bit tricky. Have to do a little bit of uh, work with this. We're concerned about the shadow of this plane, this shadow of 4 minus 2x minus y, uh, in the first quadrant. First quadrant corresponding to first octant. Uh, so if we project this plane into the first quadrant, uh, we get a triangular shape. We need the equation for the line that forms the third side of our triangle. You do that by setting z equal to 0 and solving for y, and you find that y is equal to 4 minus 2x. And now we can take this triangular region uh, and come up with bounds for this guy uh, in terms of u and v or x and y if you chose to not make the change that's perfectly fine too. Uh, X's or U's uh, for any point in this tri triangular shape region go between 0 and 2. The corresponding Y coordinates or V coordinates uh, then go up from 0 up to 4 minus 2 U. So these are the bounds that we're going to need for when we calculate the double integral. We need our tangent vectors uh, because we need to take the cross product of those tangent vectors, uh, and that's going to give us our n hat ds. So because we have a nice surface, uh, we get nice tangent vectors. Again, just partial of our parameterization with respect to u and v. Take the cross product. Very nice uh, result, 2, comma 1 
comma 1. So this is one piece that we're going to need. The other piece we're going to need is the curl of our vector field f hat there. Uh, so the curl of our vector field f hat, uh, del cross f hat, is just the straightforward uh, calculation of the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix. And you get 4x squared, comma, 1 minus 8xy, comma, negative 3x squared. Making your substitutions for x and y uh, and z, if there are any in the problem that you would be uh, working with, you get 4u squared, comma, 1 minus 8uv, comma, negative 3u squared. So now we're going to take the dot products of this vector that we just found, as well as n hat times ds, and this is going to give us the line integral that we were asked for. So by Stokes' theorem, the line integral of the tangential component of the vector field around the boundary equals the double integral over the surface uh, of the normal component of the curl. So you take the dot product of the two vectors that we said we needed to do, uh, simplify things out, your integram becomes 5u squared plus 1 minus 8uv. And then your bounds, u goes from 0 to 2, v goes from 0 to 4 minus 2u. Take the integral with uh, respect to v. Uh, pretty straightforward. Plug in your bounds. 0 on the bottom. 4 minus 2u on top. Uh, after you substitute your bounds in and take the difference and simplify everything out, you get, as your integrand, 4 minus 66u plus 84u squared minus 26u cubed. This is now just down to uh, a basic Calc 1 type of uh, integral. This is really straightforward to calculate, but in the end, you come up with a negative 4. So as you can see, this one had a little bit more work uh, that had to be done, but nonetheless, we got through it. So a uh, third problem that we're going to do, uh, we are actually going to uh, verify that Stokes uh, theorem works. We're going to calculate both um, integrals in a problem given a vector field and given a surface, uh, we're going to see uh, that we can calculate both parts of uh, Stokes' theorem and that these things are indeed uh, going to equal each other. So our vector field, capital F hat, z comma x comma 2xz plus 2xy, and s is the portion of the surface defined by z equals 2 minus x squared minus y squared for z greater than or equal to 1. And what we're going to see for this problem uh, is that trying to come up with the parameterization uh, for our boundary curve um, as well as for our surface, uh, we're going to get some more complex uh, stuff there, but still, nonetheless, we're going to find that these two things uh, come out to be the same thing. So first, we're going to calculate the uh, line integral of the tangential component of our vector field. Our boundary curve here, we said that our surface is the portion of 2 minus x squared minus y squared um, for z greater than or equal to 1. So if you picture the plane z is equal to 1 being sliced through this uh, surface here, where the plane and the surface itself intersect, that's going to form our boundary curve. So set 2 minus x squared minus y squared equal to 1. Uh, and you get a circular type uh, shape. That, and when I say circular type shape, I mean a circle. Um, that circle, if you project it into the xy plane, has equation x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. But the actual 
curve itself, the actual boundary curve, uh, sits in the plane z is equal to 1. And that's really important to know because that plays a big role uh, in making sure that both um, integrals in Stokes' theorem do indeed equal each other. So the parameterization that we want for this curve is going to be cosine t comma sine t comma 1. And that takes care of the x and y pieces. The cosine t and sine t satisfy the x squared plus y squared is equal to 1 piece. Uh, and then we have that z component of 1 because, as we just said, this curve resides in that plane. This is a full circle, so t is going from 0 to 2 pi. Uh, we need d r hat to so differentiate each component of r hat and multiply by dt at the end. We're going to take our parameterization, substitute it into our vector field. Uh, so we get 1 comma cosine of t comma 2 cosine t plus 2 sine t cosine t. So we take the dot product of our vector field, f hat of r hat of t, as well as d r hat. And when you take that dot product, uh, your uh, line integral around the boundary uh, becomes the integral from 0 to 2 pi of cosine squared t minus sine of t dt. Well, if you pull a trig uh, reduction uh, formula here, cosine squared t is 1 half plus 1 half cosine of 2t. Uh, make that substitution and then integrate. You get t over 2 plus 1 fourth times the sine of 2t plus uh, cosine of t. Take your bounds of 2 pi and 0, plug these guys in, take the difference, and you come up with pi. So that was the uh, line um, the integral part of uh, this uh, problem here. Now we want to calculate the other part. We want to calculate the surface um, integral and see that we come up with pi. So we know what we should come up with. Let's just see how we get there. So again, for the surface integral part, we need the parameterization of our surface. And that parameterization, uh, because we are working with uh, an x squared and a y squared, uh, you see that kind of thing showing up. Um, that's your sort of visual cue that, okay, probably converting to some kind of polar coordinate kind of thing uh, is what we uh, want to uh, work with. We are working with a portion that's inside of a circle. Uh, so that tells us, okay, pulling those polar coordinate formulas is probably what we want to do. The portion of the surface that we're, that we're working with if you project it into the xy plane, uh, as we saw from our boundary curve, lies inside the circle of radius 1. Uh, so x is going to be u times cosine of v. Uh, y is going to be u times the sine of v. Uh, and now our surface was z equals 2 minus x squared minus y squared. So if you do... 2 minus u squared cosine squared v minus u squared sine squared v. It comes out to be 2 minus u squared. Our u bounds, what's forming the radius of our circle that we're working with here? Well, it's everything inside the circle of radius 1. So u is going from 0 to 1. And we're talking about the entire trip around the circle. So v is going to go from 0 to 2 pi. We need our tangent vectors, t sub u hat and t sub v hat, and then, we, and then we need to take the cross products of those two vectors, and that is going to give us our n hat ds. 
So not too much trouble. Uh, T sub u hat is cosine v comma sine v comma minus 2u. T sub v hat is uh, minus u times the sine of v, u times the cosine of v comma 0. Our n hat times ds. Take the cross product of those two vectors. Uh, and when you do the algebra and you simplify things out, you get 2u squared cosine v, comma 2u squared sine v, comma u. Again, that's just straightforward uh, calculation of the determinant of a 3x3 three three matrix, something we should all feel pretty comfortable with by now. We need the curl of our vector field. Uh, so calculating the curl, again, pretty uh, straightforward here. We get 2x, comma, 1 minus 2x minus 2y, comma, 1. And you take your parameterization for your surface, you substitute it into your curl. So this gives us 2u times cosine of v, comma, 1 minus 2u cosine v minus 2u sine v, comma, 1. And now we're going to take the dot product of our curl and n hat times ds. So that dot product, when you write everything out, uh, not the prettiest looking thing, uh, but we're going to see that this is still definitely something we can work with. Uh, we get 4u cubed times cosine squared v plus 2u squared sine v minus 4u cubed sine v cosine v, minus 4u cubed sine squared v plus u. This time we went du dv. We're going to integrate with respect to u first, because we're going to see that it's easier. So u goes from 0 to 1. Uh, and then lastly, we integrate with respect to v. Uh, v bounds were, again, 0 to 2 pi. Integration with uh, respect to u is pretty straightforward. So take your integral, plug in the bounds, take the difference. When you plug in your bottom bound of 0, everything is just going to be 0. So we just get what we get when we plug in 1. And that leaves us with cosine squared v plus 2 thirds sine v uh, minus sine v times cosine v minus sine squared v plus 1 half and we're, we're taking the integral of all of this with respect to v. We have a couple terms here that are not the friendliest at first sight, but if we know our trig identities, uh, we can simplify those things out. Uh, cosine squared v minus sine squared v uh, is equal to the cosine of 2v. Uh, so we can make that substitution. And then our integral uh, becomes something that's not that bad. When you take the integral in the end, you, you get 1 half times the sine of 2v minus 2 thirds cosine v minus 1 half sine squared v plus v over 2. Take your bounds, plug them in, take the difference. When you simplify it all out, you do indeed come up with pi. This is very straightforward to check. So we got what we wanted. We saw that these two integrals, the surface integral as well as the line integral, do indeed come out to be the exact same thing. So this is just one more check that, okay, Stokes' theorem does indeed work. So these were just a few uh, sample problems here, seeing how we can use uh, Stokes' uh, theorem uh, to calculate some line integrals or to calculate some surface integrals uh, based on whichever one you want to find. It does seem uh, very complex, uh, perhaps. It can get a little bit tricky when you have to come up with a parameterization for uh, your boundary curve, uh, like we saw in this last uh, sample uh, problem. So you do have to be very careful uh, with uh, the information that you're given inside your problem. Question for you. And after I read the question, 
uh, pause the video, take some time, and uh, think about what the answer uh, is going to be. If I have two surfaces, call them S1 and S2, and uh, suppose these surfaces have the same uh, curve that's making up their boundary. Suppose they have the same boundary curve partial S, and assume that we are working under the same vector field uh, for these uh, two uh, surfaces here. So same vector field, same boundary curve, but the surfaces are not the same. Is there a difference in the integral of the normal component of the curl over these surfaces? Is there going to be a difference when I take the integral of the normal component of the curl between these two uh, surfaces? So pause it here, think about it. Uh, once you think you know the answer, press play and uh, we'll see what the answer is. Well, let's see. There is not going to be any difference here. Uh, now, perhaps some of you could have guessed that because I'm asking you uh, this question, uh, and if the answer wasn't going to be no, then why would I ask it? Um, well, here's a more mathematical reason why, uh, and this leads us to a very important uh, fact. By Stokes' theorem, the value of the integral of the normal component of the curl over a surface only depends on what's happening at the boundary of your surface. It's, it, it's really only based on your vector field as well as uh, the curve that's forming the boundary of your surface. The surface itself has really no impact on what the value of the integral of the normal component of the curl is going to be. So because your vector field and your boundary curve are the same thing, you're going to arrive at the same answer when you calculate the integral of the normal component of the curl over these two surfaces, S1 and S2. Now, this leads to a very important uh, statement. Um, this phrase is not really something that you're going to see written inside of any textbook because it's not really a common phrase uh, that's used. But for the purposes of what we're uh, talking on here, you could use this phrase. Given a vector field and a boundary curve, the integral of the normal component of the curl is independent of surface. So the surface itself does not impact the integral of the normal component of our curl. It all has to do with what's our boundary curve and what is our vector field. If you're keeping those two things the same when uh, comparing two surfaces, you're going to come up with the same answer. So this has been our video on practice problems uh, as well as uh, as well as uh, results of uh, Stokes theorem, uh, as well as um, how does this relate to something we saw in a previous portion of our class. In the next video, we're going to take at we're going to take a look at another theorem, uh, and we're going to see how this theorem relates to our other form of Green's theorem. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to drop them in the comment section below. Otherwise, until the next video, take it easy.